A lot of these plants are really the original superfoods. They really are incredibly dense in nutrients and fiber that may be more difficult to get in a modern diet from things that you can currently buy at the grocery store. If I were trying to design a genetically engineered organism to be the ideal crop, the kinds of things that I would want uh, that plant to have. I would want it to compete very successfully with other plants. I would like it not to require fertilizer, not to require water to be added to it, or be pollinated by a broad variety of insects or birds or, or other things. Those are basically all characteristics of weeds. So what we would really like is for our food crops to be like weeds. Uh, the miracle is that we already have food crops that are like weeds, namely the edible weeds, um, the wild and feral plants that we've been consuming since before the dawn of agriculture and then consuming along with agriculture for more than 10,000 years. The main problem is that they've simply fallen out of fashion as foods and the, the big block to getting them more widely accepted is really a cultural block more than anything else. It really is raising people's awareness around this and saying, hey, this is food too. And here we have uh, Herb Robert, edible medicinal three corner onions, three corner onions, blood straw, Oxalis pescapre. This is Doc, it's in the Rumex family, some family is buckwheat, nice lemony, a little bit tannic. So foraging allows you to develop eco-literacy and to learn about nature and your environment and the seasons and what um, kinds of greens or wild things come up at certain times. It turns you into this quiet observer of nature. And I feel like if we all had that, had a little bit more literacy on what foods were there naturally for us to get, how they were produced in the seasons, where we could find them. In fact, it would make us much more in tune with all the other important things, like our own internal health, or this idea of a cycle of life or a cycle in the food system. So I think it's a great place to start, but then to start to question things like, you know, why is it that I think almond milk is the most healthful thing and I'm actually willing to buy these boxes of stuff off the shelf that have carrageenan and guar gum and usually added thickeners and sweeteners in them because I think someone told me this is healthy and why why do I think this way you know ask ask questions um, and that gets back to this idea of who has hardwired our taste buds too like who really has control of our brain our taste buds our sensibility about what is food and not food. We've also tended to selectively breed for mildness and sweetness on the flavors of things. And it turns out that a lot of the nutritionally important things in plants have intense flavors and are not sweet. And so in the process of, ble of breeding for things that have high yield, mild flavors and long shelf life, we've actually accidentally bred a lot of the nutrition out of the things that we're eating. Again, I think I mentioned before that lettuce is one of the crops that was originally an agricultural weed in early agriculture. And if you think about the selective breeding that needed to happen to get something that is this bitter uh, to be as sweet as modern lettuces are, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Well, now time for the pocket dump. Um, let's see uh, what I managed to collect for dinner. Some sweet fennel and some Hirschfeldia and Kana, the short pod mustard for tonight's beverage, pineapple weed uh, flowers. The notion of an acquired taste, um, we talk about that in some contexts, you know, whether it's coffee and tea, uh, booze, you know, spirits uh, and whatnot. We have like this notion of, you know, well, whiskey is an acquired taste. Um, we don't really think about, you know, radicchio as an acquired taste. But the spectrum of flavors that are available in these wild foods is enormous. It is far broader than what's available in, on the grocery store shelves. They range from, you know, aromatic to piquant to peppery, minty, sour. All of those things make for more interesting eating. So if we start paying more attention to 
actually the sensory experience of eating, I think that alone helps sell these plants as, as legitimate foods. Really, we, we're missing all along the line. We're missing ecological advantages, we're missing um, nutritional advantages, we're missing culinary opportunity, um, we're wasting food. Yep. Not everybody's thing. Wanna try it? <laughs>